And my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African American Film Critics Association. And today for After Roundtables, we have actor Derek Luke and Chris Emden uh, today with us. I am going to introduce to you the members that we have with us, uh, starting with Al McGee in South Florida. Hello. Rhonda Rasha Penrice in Atlanta. Tamika Newhouse, also in Atlanta. Howdy, guys. And DJ Chris Stiles in Cleveland. Hey, what's up? So we also have Anthony Johnson uh, signing in from Houston, Texas. What's up, guys? Hey, Anthony. So without further ado, African members, do your thing. Hi, I'm Al McGee with uh, YETicket.com. Derek Luke, nice to see you. It's great. I'm a good fan of yours. And uh, Dr. Emden, I am so glad to talk to you about this Science Genius Program because I'm a former educator. I was a college professor at the Florida Memorial University, which is a uh, historic black uh, college university. I've taught there for 10 years and also I've taught at other places too. But this initiative is very, very important because I feel that science is, is a, uh, a subject matter that many African Americans don't get into, especially when they're young. Because again, I taught, not only that, I was a young person myself a long time ago. So how, how do you feel that, uh, this is for you, Emden, how do you feel that uh, young people now are interested in this is it because of the rap part of it or what part is that? I think there's a lot going on in society right now. Um, some of it is problematic, but in the midst of what's problematic as far as sort of Black Lives Matter and sort of centering Black bodies and Black voices um, in response to like sort of historical oppression, what's happening right now is that young folks are really imagining themselves as bigger than what society has positioned them as. You know, for the first time in a very long time, they're saying we have a voice, we have a brain, we have a heart, we have a mission, we have a vision. And when young folks start seeing themselves as bigger than what society has locked them into, they start exploring new dimensions. So right now, they're exploring, with, what if I am a scientist? What if I am a mathematician? What if I am a social critic? And I think merging that with hip hop, which has always been a staple of the ways of knowing and being of young black and brown bodies, is allowing this new explosion to happen. So right now they're going through this self-discovery and this self-discovery is getting opened up through their own culture. And we, you know, Derek and I combined to bring the science and performance aspect to it. And the result has been, you know, just powerful. Young folks taking more science classes, showing up to classes more often, but most importantly, seeing themselves as more than they've historically been seen as. Mm. Oh, that's great. And Derek, Absolutely. Luke, did you get into this because uh, deep down inside said you are a nerd with science and things like that? Uh -huh. And you also want, to, want young people to, to find themselves at a yeah. younger age and to, to explore that much more when they get older or as they're growing old. Is that why you got involved with this project? Um, man, that's a good question. Uh, well, first of all, I was, I was given this uh, project called CRAM. And Cram was a story about an inner city school teacher. And I always love that narrative. I love the, the mentor and the mentee. Um, and it's crazy because, you know, all my life I was looking for a mentor. And, uh, and it's, it's interesting to find myself in this position. And I think what stands out for me is um, like, I imagine that the story that I'm really telling, whether uh, it's a film and TV, is really my story. And I felt like, you know, even in the neighborhood where I'm from, um, you know, you have a lot of regentrification happening, but it seems like the last people to benefit from it was men of color that looked just like me. And so that's why I was always drawn to the Denzels and the Sitting 48, because they allowed me to live in a greater narrative than I, I was living. And to be introduced to science by somebody like Christopher Emden, like, you know, my connection with Chris is like walking into a store on Rodeo Drive and you don't have no money. Um, because the, the merchandise doesn't really give you that off-put attitude, it's the people that's selling it. 
And to me, it's been the, the system connected with science that really off put science to me. And that's why I, 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 I had to, and that's why me and him have become brothers in supporting this work. You know what, so Ill, if, if you got, you, can we just have a dialogue or do we have to wait for questions? <laughs> well, normally we just, just wait for questions for everybody. Okay. Okay. No, no, go ahead. Right. Well, go no, because they just made such a, such a powerful sort of like commentary. And I think what a lot of folks don't recognize when it comes to science is like, it's not about becoming this nerdy scientist who wears lab coats and sits in a lab somewhere that no one has access to. I think all of us could be more scientifically minded and more creative and introspective and have a relationship to math and a relationship to technology. So, you know, when I look at Derek and when I engage with him, one thing I observed is that he's, he, had a very, he has a very scientific way of engaging in the world. When he talks to me about his process of selecting roles, he looks at it, he observes it. He sees whether or not he can find a relationship to it. He goes and researches other folks' experience to see if he can connect to. He, com he constructs a hypothesis about how he can do this thing. Then he performs, this is an experiment. Then he reflects on it. And so Derek selects his roles like a scientist engaged in the scientific exploration and discovery. And so for him, it's like finally realizing that, wait, I was a scientist all along around selecting movie scenes? Mm -hmm. I think if he knew that all along, his, his ability to see himself as not just an actor, but a, an actor with a scientific way of thinking, you know what I mean? Like a, and I think that it's for all of us to recognize that science is in us, that it's, it's with us. And it's not about something that's off-putting, but it's about a piece of our identity that society has silenced, but that we can now bring to the fore. Wait, 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 can I, can I, can I, can I, listen, he made me, sorry, he made me, he made me think about something because, um, you know, my, my first job was in a, in a gift shop in Sony Pictures lot in Culver City. And one of the things that happened to me, like when I was back in Jersey, when my mom and my family said, I want you to find a job this summer, is that I lived in the classified and I didn't, I said I didn't see a job, but I didn't see a job that I was mentally qualified for. And I carried that same narrative to Hollywood because all the roles, if, you, if I would have saw a role, even Antoine Fisher, like if I would have sold out, saw a role broken down the way it was, that's not how I responded to that role. I responded to the role based on the connection, not based on the math and the science of it. But for someone to encourage me that math and science is just an innate ability inside of me, man, I would have approached taking roles a different way. Anyway, yeah. Well, um, piggybacking on that. And Derek, didn't you work in the Wu store when you were in Newark? Huh? Didn't you work in the Wu store when you were in New, uh, not the Wu store, but the um, Naughty by Nature store? Um, I worked next to the Naughty by Nature store. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I used to pass, it was, it was right by the barber shop and the sneaker store. I was in the sneaker store. So I was very close. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Chris, I'm actually a Columbia alum. And wow. um, I was like, I was at, well, Teachers College when, um, when um, they had the, show here and now they filmed it at teachers college in columbia but anyway talk take us through this journey when did you make this connection to um well this have this epiphany to connect um science and hip-hop well you know for me it, be, it, it it began as when i was a student i always felt like i had the secret sauce that all the other students in my master's program didn't have so i, I have a master's in science and natural sciences from Rensselaer Polytechnic which is a really uh, highly ranked science and engineering school. And I remember we'd have these exams and all my, my, uh, my, my, my friends would be going crazy trying to prepare for the exam, trying to cram and you know, try to stay up all night and try to figure out things. And they, none of them looked like me, but I, I noticed that they were all struggling. And I knew that back home, if an album dropped on Tuesday, I knew all the lyrics by Wednesday or Thursday, because I would just listen to it and something about the rhythm and the lyrics and the rhyming, it stuck with me. So while they were going crazy in the library, I would just write a couple of verses. Mm -hmm. And I would memorize the verses really quickly. And so they'd be at the exam going nuts. And I would just be tapping on my table. You know what I mean? Remembering my own lyrics and the, the science poured out of me. And so that was the first discovery when I was a student, realizing that hip hop helped me to learn. Mm -hmm. But then when I started teaching young people, I would see genius on a street corner. I mean, when I tell you, 
a young person will be on a corner in a cypher, reciting their rhymes over beats and rhythms, joy in their eyes, everybody's listening closely, expanded vocabulary, they're observing the environment around them, they're reflecting in situ, they have analogies and metaphors, and I was saying to myself, oh my gosh, science is all analogy and metaphor. It's about having an amazing ability to retain information. Mm. It's about having keen observation skills. It's about being really reflective. And these young folks were doing it when they were rapping on a corner. And then when they were in the science class, they're like, I can't do this. And I said, something's got to give. Because I'm seeing the raw talent on the street, and I'm not seeing it expressed in the classroom. So when I saw those two things, I said, what if I bring some of the things on the street into the classroom? So we started having hip hop instrumentals playing at volume three while they were doing their math and science problems. And all of a sudden the interest is peaked. Mm. Then we had them writing a couple of rhymes and bars around what they were learning. And all of a sudden they're knowing more information. Then we had, we had them confessing. This is an important part. Saying out loud, yo, if, you know, I'm a scientist. I'm a mathematician. And the more that people say out loud what they believe to be, the more it gets ingrained into their consciousness. So we started doing that as well and seeing results. And then after that, um, we had to make it formal. So as I went on, I got my doctorate and got to Columbia, I started researching the art of hip hop as it relates to teaching and learning, as it relates to science and math and engineering and technology. And that gave birth to this phenomenon. And some of these kids, I mean, they got like real skills. Listen. Like some of these rhymes are amazing. Sister, it ain't even that they got skills with the rhyme. I want us to understand they got skills with the science. Like, this is what's exciting to me. I, I want the whole world to look at black and brown babies as scientists and mathematicians undiscovered. Mm. That all our job is is not to teach them science and math, but it's to reveal the science and math that exists within them. Mm. I think all the time about someone like Harriet Tubman, who everyone identifies as being like brave because she led the, you know, the slaves out to freedom, who was a natural scientist and mathematician, who looked at Polaris in the night sky, identified that without an astronomy degree, without, without any knowledge of sciences, and recognized that you could use that as a navigating tool, to look at the tides of the water and study the science and math of that and the geography of the environment. And she couldn't read or write, she didn't have any formal education, but she used science and math to lead to a path towards freedom. If we all can recognize the science and math within us, then we don't get locked out of a billion and trillion dollar industry mm. that requires a science and math degree because we run towards it rather than move away from it. Man, it yes. Amen, I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> uh, Dr. Chris, uh, this is Tamika Newhouse. I'm out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I love the fact that you and Derek have co uh, collaborated on creating an experience around learning. And it's, and first of all, I love your energy. Uh, I see the passion when you speak. Um, and I see that this is something that you really, really, really love and enjoy doing. And Derek, I always see that in your acting. And so it's, it's funny that you mentioned Antoine Fisher because obviously that's how the world was introduced to you. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask about how you went through the process of selecting the, the roles that you would like to take on because mm -hmm. I feel that your acting, you, you like to leave an impact. It has to have some type of meaning or purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and you spoke about actually connecting versus, I guess, quote unquote, acting mm -hmm. um, and actually connecting with the character and bringing out that emotion. I always feel like I'm, I'm watching the actual person. Like, I don't ever think that it's, you know, you. Mm -hmm. um, how has the impact uh, been on the children uh, through this, this, this endeavor that you and Dr. Chris have um, embarked on, how do you feel the impact has been and where do you kind of see it going? Um, is this, is this to me or both of us? Yeah, it's, a, it's oh. to you or it's to Dr. Oh. Chris either, yeah. Um, well, we can, well, like for me, like this, this program has been, um, Chris, when did we go to the Betsy DeVos Foundation? It was, man, I think about a year ago. I don't even think it was the Betsy DeVos Foundation. I think it was just the DeVos Foundation. DeVos? Uh, yeah, it's the DeVos Foundation. Um, uh, I, and I think it was Virginia. Virgin okay. I, you know what? I Just in my heart, like, um, like when you go to these schools and you see like so many, especially uh, the black and brown men, and you see the prison pipeline 
you know, like in my heart, I feel like, you know, like you got to do something. And um, it's like how my mom used to call me out when she would take us to church. She would always interview my friends and she would like, uh, does uh, did Derek or Morris tell you that they, they go to church? And my whole point in bringing that up is that like mentally, I just tried to focus on my acting career, but what was getting lost was my voice. And to me, I just, I'm, I'm devoting my whole heart to collaborate with Chris to, to sound the alarm and sound the voice. And for me, like everywhere I go, I talk about Professor Chris Emden, I talk about the program. What I would love to do is, I would love to approach people like the Teachers Union. I would love to uh, approach Mrs. DeVos and I actually, we wrote a letter to her about a year ago. I didn't get a response, uh, some people that knew her, but I, I wanted to bring people who normally don't talk to the table to talk. You know, it's easy to say, well, they're Republican, they're racist, you're Democrat, you're for the people. But I, I found scrutiny on both sides. So I want to talk to the people that's on top of the mountain. And that's where my heart is. I don't know if I answered your question, but I'm just letting you know where my, where my passion is. Now, that, that was fire, D. And, and, and to oh, me, Rihanna, I, Rihanna. And you got to tell them. About Rihanna? About but this, 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 <laughs> this girl, she does this like spoken word and like, you know, she's just playing just a, just a regular teen and she's talking and next thing you know, she goes into this sort of schizophrenic trance and she's just combining science, spoken word, hip hop, lyrics. Then at the end of her spitting, she takes off her jacket and it reveals that she was a cutter. And she, kind of, she talks about how the program helped her heal. And that's what I think that's missing from education is the holistic healing aspect. And that's what we try and bring. Man, you, you, you said so much, brother. And I, like, I wanna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna connect back to Tanika's initial thought and then go somewhere else if I may. Mm -hmm. Here's why Derek and I are connected and that a lot of folks are like, what is going on here? Part of our work is to transform the experiences for young folks, but it's also to transform the experiences of teachers. And when you describe Derek as like, when you're up there, I don't see you, I see the character, there's some truth, there's some authenticity about who you are, that's because Derek is a natural teacher. And part of this work is helping teachers to understand that their work is to do what you described that he did, which was connect make them feel like it's bigger than just what's on the screen. Make them feel like they're delving into the character. So this is, this is not transforming students' lives. This is transforming education. We want teachers to be able to understand what it means like and feels like to connect the young folks authentically. So Derek's idea as a performer is part of what you need to be able to do as a good educator. You gotta be able to perform to make young folks be emotionally connected to you. So we've been training teachers together. We've been going around the country training teachers as well as working with young people. Another piece of this narrative that's important is, is to understand that, you know, you don't, you don't change education by looking at only one player. You don't say, you know, we don't care about schools, we don't care about parents, we don't care about teachers, we just trying to make young people heal. Nah, we've done work with young folks, we've done work training teachers, we've put on a conference for the last four years inviting educators to be able to look at the beauty and magic of hip hop, when we talk about science genius, science genius is just one strand of our work. We've also brought recording studios to public schools. We've talked to young folks about counseling and teaching and healing and learning as part of the same continuum. So it's a robust and holistic approach to transform education from the student perspective, from the teacher perspective, and from a system perspective. And science genius is just one small slice of a complex idea to revolutionize education. Yes, that answered my question. That was great. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hey, what up? I'm DJ Chris Styles out of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, music director and radio host. I'm also in education, so I still work in the school system in Cleveland, in the school districts. Um, we got a program here actually at our radio station called Read and Ram. They do the exact same thing that you guys do. So we have a program on Friday, and it's by the kids, and every song in there is produced and it's rap song about science, math, and everything. 
that wow. they do. Uh, DJ Fatty Banks been doing it for the last ten years. So we actually have the show, and he does it all across the city. The everything that you said have done. This is what he's been doing for the past ten years. So it was really really dope. So when I read about, it, I said, "Yo, this is a dope thing because somebody else is is connecting, is going through." Mm -hmm. um, so I'm real big in education, and I love it. I'm big in the hip hop. How big do you want this battle to be? Like, I, I'm interested in that battle part of it, of using that, because that's a different element. Mm. Bring it to that table. Okay, yes, we're battles, but you're going to battle about these subjects mm -hmm. and the creative that come out of it. Like, I'm, I just can't wait till that come out. Like, what was the, uh, the driving force behind the battle part of it? Because there's nothing more powerful for the learner than to experience the, the heat of the battle. That moment where, you know, you could, you could know something when you're just memorizing it. To be able to go and do it on stage and somebody else is challenging you, that's the height of academic knowledge. And, you know, here's the thing about hip hop and the battle. People think that a battle is about competition to knock somebody down. Nah, the battle in hip hop is a duel of skills to make each other better. And I think that an Afrocentric, y'all gonna get me going somewhere now. You know, an oh, yeah. Afrocentric model of education has always been about soldiers and scholars sharp sharpening their swords and skills through the heat of the moment with each other so that they can both reach heights of learning and heights of skills that they could not do on their own. Mm. So part of what we're doing is a more, a more robust model for teaching and learning that takes it out of regular schooling, bro. And here's the thing that you said I love. But man, this dude been out here in Cleveland doing this for 10 years. Across this country, we have educators who have the skills, who have the ability, and have the innovation, and they're doing it without a voice, without a platform. You know what I mean? And so what Derek and I are trying to do is th this guy, you know, like he's one of the dopest actors of all time, if you ask me. Like, you know what I mean? He, he's just the littiest of lit, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as far as practitioner, performer. And you know, I ain't, I ain't nothing to um, sneeze at, you know, in the education world, I'm out here doing my thing. And what we want to do more than anything is not just highlight ourselves, but highlight the kind of program that you're talking about in your hometown. And highlight somebody in LA and in Brooklyn and in Newark, who's also seeing this innovation and utilize the science genius battles as a framework to bring all of that together. So how big do we want it? As big as it get? Mm -hmm. We want young folks in your home city to be a part of this project and in every city across the country. And even across the world, you know, we've been doing this in Jamaica. They, they were doing dance hall science. Wow. So we want to make this a global enterprise because the music of black and brown folks has always been the chief mechanism for the expression of their brilliance. Mm. But schools never made it to have a home. Wow. And now we want to make our culture and our music and expression have a home within the learning space. And so we're going to make it as big as it could possibly get. Derek, wow. Derek, you get involved in this project. Um, I know you was looking for, you've done a ton of great movies, great roles. Do you feel like this is your, your, your biggest role that you have taken on that, in your career? <laughs> um, I, I think that, I think, yeah, this is one of the uh, biggest roles. Uh, you know, me and my wife, we go to um, conferences like every year to, to get poured into, especially when you're always constantly pouring out. And uh, it was this man there, because uh, I grew up in a, in a spiritual environment. It was a man there, and you would call him like a prophet. And basically some of his words was like, before you can lead, you have to know where you lead them, leading them, and you have to be worthy, worthy to become a leader. And for me, that's not something that I was chasing but to answer your question is that I realized that even though I was doing work and I was doing film, my heart and my voice was getting lost. And when I got involved into the program and I, I man, y'all have no idea. I, I really believe that Chris uh, is like America's favorite teacher. Um, and my point in saying all that and answering your question is that I, I believe that I'm, a, I'm at a place in my life where I, 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 I want to be responsible and passionate about what I say on screen. And there, man, like I'm, I'm in such a blessed position to get roles presented, but I wasn't passionate about it. 
And uh, it was, but I'm so passionate about this. I want to see this come to fruition. Yes, the, the IP portion of it, but the transformation in the school portion as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I love what you're doing. I'm heavy into hip hop. I'm heavy into education. So this is really dope, man. Any support that you need, let me know. Hey, thank you, bro. Wait, did I did I answer your question? Because I was in my head, bro. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You got it. What's up, guys? Ant, the movie brother out of Houston, Texas. Um, I, too, love what you guys are doing. Uh, besides being a film critic, I've had a corporate career in data and analytics and tech for 20 years and it's absolutely not enough of us right people that uh, you know peers that look like me so you know something me and my boys talk about all the time is exposure yes. right and and that's one of the reasons I love so much what you guys are doing because right through hip-hop you know kids are you know being exposed to maybe some aspect right we're talking about science here that they had no I idea of so right once this You've created this avenue, right? This kid gets exposed to geology or botany or, or, or whatever aspect of science that, that may be. My question to you guys, um, and maybe it's already happening, or is it something that you've thought about in terms of, right, when these kids get that newfound interest, have you connected with some companies or, you know, different organizations out there where they can get, right, start start getting introduced, be it internships or hands-on experience, mm -hmm. right, to where they, they take that next step, right, to see, hey, it's this whole world out here, this whole other path you can take that maybe you had no no idea of. Mm. I love that. I love that question. And, and I would say that we have not connected young folks with industry. Mm -hmm. What we have done is connect them with higher education. Mm -hmm. So we work with a lot of K through, you know, mostly high school students. On occasion, we'll get a middle school, middle, middle school student that we kind of bring along as well. And what we've done is give them exposure to colleges. So, you know, we've had our first graduates of kids who are in Science Genius who are not graduating from college and going to graduate school and, and partnerships within higher ed, but not partnerships within industry. And I think it's an amazing new frontier mm -hmm. that I think we should definitely consider. So thank you for that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, no, man, you guys got something super dope and, um, I mean, I, I think the, the opportunities are unlimited because, yeah, and even through the higher education, right, because all of the different graduate programs and, um, you know, right, professors need assistance all the time, right? So, you know, who, who's going to turn down, you know, kids wanting to come in and assist or help out or what? I mean, right, I go on and on and on, but uh, I think you guys really have something and think about it, right? You just started with science here. Right, Derek, you're in the film industry. Mm -hmm. All of, you know, I'm always thinking about all of these opportunities, right, of individuals behind the camera, right, from the cinematographer yeah. to the producer to the director to, I mean, right, you know, all of these different roles that, um, you know, I always tell my daughter all the time, you know, she write, watch, will watch these cartoons and stuff when she was a kid. I'm like, you know, there's someone writing these stories, yeah. right? You, you yeah. know that, right? You like to write and you like to draw. Someone yeah. has to create this content. So anyway, um, big ups to you guys. Uh, I, I think you're doing something really awesome here. And, um, you I, know, it's, it's not. Can I, can I, when you was talking about behind the camera, um, I, uh, we were filming in uh, New Orleans. Uh, we had finished, I think, October, November. And um, one of the hopes and what came out of it was the set designer. And uh, like it was, you know, out of all the years of me doing film, like this was one of my favorite sets because it felt like an average two or three bedroom home. But uh, he told me the note from the producers in the studio was that we don't want it to feel like a mansion, but we do want it to feel like these people live in it and who they are. And I, I literally got a camera and I interviewed uh, our set designer, and he said, he started the conversation about, he said, you know, Derek, when I got the script, it was, it was a void, and all I had is one sentence description on you, you weren't even cast yet, and he talked about how the stage and the studio just gave him this, this empty uh, bubble, and then he talked about how him and his crew came uh, to develop this this empty space, man, and he starts talking about 
acute angles. And man, I was following him and I said, bro, I said, listen, can we, can we record this to sort of develop like, you know, how they have master class? I says, I would love to do like a master class for guys and kids um, that want to get behind the scenes, don't know what it is, but they have a natural ability. You know what I'm saying? Like, a graf like graffiti, just to design and to do things. And man, we had this. Yo, D, you know what's so crazy, bro? So uh -huh. check this out. Some kid is going to go and be like, yo, that set looks so dope. Mm -hmm. And then that man is going to say, yeah, we have to do acute angles and perpendicular lines. And they were like, oh, I can't do this. And I think that's, a, I want us to understand it. Listen, do you know that the fear of math and science, the phobia for math and science amongst folks of color has turned geniuses into high school dropouts? Not, not the ability, just the phobia. Part of what we want to do here is just eliminate the phobia. Let me tell you, like, I'll go out with my friends, right? We'll go out to eat, and at, at the end of dinner, everybody says, they, they, they pass me their credit cards, and they say, Doc, you know, Dr. E, you do the bill. And I say, why? Because the, I'm a PhD, and I like science and math, so they just, they just they say, I'm like, yo, fam, it's just division. This is third grade division. If I wanted to be sinister, I could take all y'all cards and mess your whole life up. You know what I'm saying? Look, but, 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 and I've asked my friends, I said, why do y'all just always turn to me to pay the bill? And they're like, yo, you know, all that math, all that division. So you got experts, professionals who have a phobia of division. Mm. So what we're trying to do through Science Genius is conquer the math and science phobia in our community. And if you are scared of science and math, you're going to be scared of freedom. <laughs> You've eliminated the fear of an invisible thing that has colonized your mentality. Your whole world opens up. When you conquer a fear of science and math, your self-confidence increases. Your limitations get expanded. Your perception of who you can be and what you can do becomes bigger. So this is not just about science and math. It's about conquering phobias that has been Im embedded into the consciousness of black and brown folks historically to make them limit their potential. You know what I mean? And so understand that this is science and math is just the beginning. Conquering the fear of your own limitations is the goal. Mm. Mm. Shoot. Love it. No. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it, bro. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Dr. M. Dean, my question is, uh, I was reading your bio and you said there's flaws in education. Well, how do you get parents to follow this program or to get their kids to, in, to get involved? Or how you get the parents to believe in this program? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my first step with parents is just to remind them of what school was like for them. And for a vast majority of parents, they survived school. They didn't thrive within it. You know, they went through it. They struggled through it. They had a bunch of teachers they didn't like either, but they struggled through it. And they came on the other side of it and said, phew, I made it. Mm -hmm. So you got to remind parents, did you like school when you were there? Was it a place of joy? Was it a place of discovery? Did you learn to feel talented and gifted through it? And most parents send their kids to the same kind, to the same school, to schools with the same kind of bad education that they received. So it's reminding parents that you want their children to have better and have more. Mm -hmm. So that's one way we begin. And then part of this also is, you know, teaching parents to themselves discover that they are learners and then they could be a part of this project. Some of the best science genius raps you've gotten so far are from grownups, 30 years old, 40 years old, 45 years old, who are like, man, I, I wish I could do this when I was in school. And so it's just opening up the possibilities and reminding them of their own traumas and then giving them a pathway to heal and heal through their own experiences, but also heal through their students' experiences. Oh, wow, that's great. And, and Derek, well, while you were in school, when you were a young man, did you feel that, that you were not enjoying school and your potential in school was not being uh, exposed while you were in school? Um, definitely. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think school was wired for somebody like me. Um, you know, uh, for instance, um, I, have a, I have a process on how I consume knowledge like like for instance say if, if me and my wife are listening to a li uh, someone speaking um like i rarely take notes it's not 
it's not that, you know, me and Jay-Z got something in common, but like in my ear, if I can, if I can get an understanding of what that speaker is talking about, then I can freestyle. Um, but if you go through your whole lecture and I don't gain an understanding, then the application of knowledge and understanding can't produce wisdom. So even when I'm on the set, uh, many times I don't like to rehearse. It's not that, you know, rehearsal is bad, but I just have such a, I have more of an instinct of touch. And in the classroom, it wasn't open like that. And, and even on the set, you gotta be a real good director to direct actors. Why? Because actors is like kids. And every kid you have have different personalities, different learning abilities, and you can't try to school them the same way or you will destroy them. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, I understand because I used to teach drama also, and you, you're right on point with that. Mm. Man, you guys got a great program here, and uh, I'm going to follow up, and also I'm going to try to talk about it more on my uh, website too. Thank um, you so friends, much, man. man. Thank you. I'm glad to talk to you too, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So well, before we wrap, oh, oh, go ahead. Now I was going to say before we wrap up, I was just curious. You know, what are some of your top rappers that um, you feel promote math and science? Man, oh, that's such a brilliant question. I I garner so much from so many different MCs. So I'm a Wu Tang fan. Um, hey. Early on in this project, one of the uh, MCs that really showed me a lot of love. He actually came with me to visit some schools. Is Jizza from Wu Tang. And if you go and dissect the vocabulary, I think he's the rapper who, who has the most innovative wordplay and word use of any MC ever. So Wu-Tang for me, Jizza in particular is brilliant. Mm. Um, I think, I think Jay-Z has a sort of math and science to his approach to writing. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I love so many different MCs for different reasons. Like a lot of folks are like stuck in the 90s. Like I love Lil Baby and the Baby. I think the baby has a really beautiful cadence. Oh, the baby, yes. Yeah, like, the baby. The baby got a really dope cadence. I like, it's, like it's a mathematical kind of flow. It's like the number of syllables per line is so distinct. And I'm like, does he know that there's a math and science to his flow? I don't know if he does. I'd love to have a conversation with that young man to let him know that he has something to his delivery. Mm -hmm. um, of course, like Trap Call Quest and Poor Righteous teaches them old school cats as well. Um, I think Jay Cole is very analytical. J. J. Cole to me is like an environmental scientist. He's on you know, he sits on the perch and observes the universe and takes detailed notes and then spews it back out for the rest of his audience. So, I, you know, I see the map and science. You know, I look, I could see a person and, and then I identify, man, that person should have been an astrophysicist or that person should have been an ecologist or that person should have been a neuroscientist or that person should have been a nanotechnologist. Just by the nature of their lyrics, I could see what kind of science or math that they would have been an expert in, in conjunction with being an MC. And it's saying not, not saying don't be an MC. You know, Derek knows this about me a lot. I say be more than one thing. Mm. In our lives, we've always been taught that you can only be one thing. Look at Anne. Anne is a technology professional who understands coding and is a movie critic. Kids should understand that you could be like Anne and you could do more than one job. Look at DJ Cristal. He a DJ and an educator and got a radio show. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Derek is an actor slash teacher slash director, you know, slash public speaker. You can do that. And young folks have always learned you can do one thing. Wow. And so this is also like, you could be a rapper slash science student slash math student. And it's okay to do more than one thing. And by virtue of being a melanated human being, you can do all of those things and be successful at all of it. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a PhD level scientist and a professor and a writer and I got bars and none of those things are lost. Mm -hmm. So it's like about expanding the possibilities and be robust and magical and beautiful and excellent at all of it. Yeah, Chris, yeah. You know what, Dr. Chris, you got something you can spit for us real quick. Do you do that? <laughs> Yeah, what, you, want, you want some science bars? You want some regular yeah, bars? I want some I science something. bars. Let's get some science, science bars. bars. Just Check it out. Yo, I'm a physicist, lyricist, spitting this ridiculousness, witness the ignorance I dismiss. If no one's lost emotion with the topic of the course, 
then things of motion stay in motion unless they're hitting a balanced force. Well, next up is the second law of situation and summation force equals mass of acceleration. That's the second law of Newton force. So if you want more than the third law is in store, uh, see every force got an opposite force. Every action got an equal plus opposite reaction. The sum of all objects at rest is zero, unless that object is longer relaxing. I mean, in motion, change in location, still hits traction, a coefficient of friction. Then it all comes to a full stop, and they went new and laws over hip hop. Hmm. Pause. Okay. <laughs> That's my intro to science lesson to the young folks. To the young folks. Yeah. Love it. My cheeks hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is terrific. Uh, and I believe you had one more question. Yeah, one more quick question. And I mean, either of you guys, right? So you guys have started this program. You've been out there teaching. What have you taught, right? What have, well, not taught, but what have you learned, right? Um, what have you been educated on, you mm. know, since you guys started this? You know, maybe it's something from the kids, the process. Um, what, what, what have you guys gotten out of this? Wow. Yeah, it was personal for me. I think, uh, huh? Um, yeah, it, it was, you know, uh, I think traveling with Chris, uh, it's been about, what, eight years now? Yes, uh, sir. So I, I used to think that something was wrong with me and not the system. And so, uh, you know, now, you know, now it's reversed. And then I think, traveling with Chris, how it impacted me as an actor is not losing my voice. Um, because I see him utilize his voice and I, and I ask myself like, okay, pedigree cannot be the only antidote to art. It has to be voice as well. Chris? Oh, that was philosophy, man. Hey, yo, you know, listen. Yeah, I, like I, I just want the world at some point, I, again, it's been almost, eight years that we've been working together, but I, I really want the world to understand the heart that my brother has um, for young people, for education, for reimagining new possibilities. Like Derek is not an actor. Derek is an activist that leads with his soul to connect the young folks. And, and, I, and I, this is not probably the space to say this, but I'll say this, he's come, out of his own pocket and flown around the country, Houston, Texas, Virginia, New York, California. Man, I think we was in Iowa once, Nevada. And, he, you know, this is not anything that he did because it elevates his voice or that he gets some props for it. On his own, come with me to work with teachers and work with young people to reimagine schooling. This is not, um, this is a passion project. Uh, for him. And he doesn't have to lend his platform to me. I'm just some professor who's been working with young folks. For him to utilize his voice to give an opportunity for me to be able to speak from my heart and pack young people. Man, um, I just want folks to know his heart. And what I've learned in this process is, is to be humble, to recognize, to be humble but unafraid, to listen to young people because they have the answers we always try to fix young folks. They have the answers to how to fix the situation and fix the world, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and two, to lead with heart and purpose and recognize that everything else will figure itself out. Right. Um, and so those are the things that I've learned on this journey. Mm. Thank you, guys. No, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Well, guys, this has been absolutely magnificent. Thank you so much. On behalf of the world's largest group of Black film critics, uh, we appreciate certainly what you're doing, Derek, both in front of and off camera. And Chris, I mean, your words are golden, bro. So keep yeah. spreading that wisdom, keep spreading that knowledge. Guys, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.